What is happening everyone? Glad you are able to join us so we can talk about the motor that is in this specific radio controlled car. We just ended up taking the data log and pulling it off of our speed control just to see exactly what is going on in this motor. And let me tell you, there's a lot of amps. Let's dive into it and understand the data log, go through a bunch of parameters so we can see the type of performance and changes that we need to make for our second and next run. Here is our graph. We're gonna be taking a look at a bunch of parameters here and talking through what we see in the very first pass that we made with the Limitless. Now, I do wanna point out a few things before we get started. We have this line here right in the middle of our graph. This represents the time that we took the 6S battery pack out of the vehicle and put an 8S battery pack into the limitless. Anything left of this line is going to be our 6S pass. Anything right of this line is going to be our 8S packs. Anytime you disconnect a battery and reconnect it, the system here, the Castle Creations data log, creates a different session for that specific part of the log. Now, a bunch of parameters is what we're going to be reviewing here in this video. Now, a couple parameters that we're interested in is voltage. We wanna know what's going on with the voltage. We do wanna know what's going on with the ripple voltage. However, we did cover this in a completely different video, so I'd highly suggest taking a look at that because this is one of those values that can destroy one of your components, and there's not a lot of evidence to show you why something went wrong. So check that out. We're interested in current just because those values are super, super impressive as well as wattage. We are ultimately interested in looking at the temperature of our speed control, the temperature of our motor, and the power output of our system to make certain that we're hitting the value we expect. A couple points I wanna make before diving into these values is that we are using a very potent power system. The power system that we have, we're actually running it so conservatively. And because we know this, what I've done is I've actually made back to back to back to back to back passes, which in speed runs, you typically do not do this. You run it for a pass, you bring it in and you let it cool because the temperatures are spiking up to where you'll see us here at the very end of our, our runs, you'll see those temperatures at the very end of one or two passes. So just something to keep in mind here, and it is not recommended to make back-to-back -back passes unless you absolutely know that your temperatures are going to be in check for all the components that you have within your power system. And just to give you an idea as to how conservative we are running, the gearing on the Limitless is a 22 tooth pinion gear as well as a 42 tooth spur. Now for those of you who want to know, I'm sure someone has the value and can comment below as to what the stock value is relative to what our values that we're using here for gearing. The reason why we're geared so conservatively is because our goal is only 100 miles per hour. However, we want to show and demonstrate that it's possible to pick your power system to do a specific speed and you can do that through the Patreon RC calc sheet that we have. So let's go ahead, take a look at the first pass here, which is essentially our last success pass, but it is our first 6s pass that actually hit a decent speed this was just shy of the 80 miles per hour mark or about 135 kilometers per hour first thing that i'm interested in and always interested in no matter if it's a car boat or plane that i am running is what does the power output look like in this case you can see as we mouse over this value we are at 100 percent meaning that we're not leaving any speed on the table. We do not want to see 93, 95, 80, or anything else when we know that we're pulling the trigger all the way and squeezing nice and tightly. If you do happen to see values that are less than 100, you probably should recalibrate your speed control so that you can get 100% every single time that you squeeze the throttle fully. Key point to throw out here is if you don't see 100%, but you're pretty confident your speed control has been programmed correctly, you may have some sort of delay device on the throttle that is delaying the throttle signal, not allowing the speed control to hit 100%, in which case you probably need to adjust that delay in your specific component that you are using. So key point there as well. Now, I'm always interested in taking a look at the voltage and just seeing how it looks for a pass. Now, this is very conservative and we're only just getting into it, our first success pass. Voltage looks okay, and we're seeing the most appropriate or inappropriate amount of voltage drop for this specific power system. As we pull power from our battery pack, voltage begins to sag 
here, you can see that happening. And this is where we get the lowest amount of voltage from our battery pack when we're pulling the highest amount of current from the pack. And our current, which is quite incredible here, remember, very conservative. We got an intense power system with huge capabilities, and we're only scratching the surface as to what this thing can do here at 214 amps. Talk about this to your local electrician that comes into your house and fixes your 15 amp circuits that you're pulling 215 amps from uh, a radio control car. This is incredible stuff here, guys. So wattage from all this power that we're pulling and the voltage that we're able to maintain, we're seeing about 45 to 4,800 watts. That is, again, quite considerable considering your average circuit in a North American home puts out about 1,500 to 1,800 watts or so. So now taking a look at what I am more interested in is following the relationship of our temperature. Temperature of the speed control in this, in this specific run is 37.8 degrees and our motor here on the right-hand side of our area is at 46.8 as a maximum somewhere here that it has achieved. So right here in the middle of the run, it's at 45.2, and after a few seconds, it ends up pushing up to about 47 degrees. This is absolutely nothing for this power system or even any power system if these are the temperatures that you're seeing. These are really, really, really good temperatures. So everything looks like it's very much well in check. And keep in mind that we already made passes before these, and this is the accumulated temperature that we're essentially seeing since we did not let the motor and speed control cool. All right, let's dive into that very last pass that we made here on 8S. This is the pass that we achieved our 100 miles per hour. And of course, this was 100 miles per hour in the air and not necessarily fully on the ground. And we look at this value, we are hitting the 100% power output. Once you look at it on a previous pass, unless you change something, you don't need to look at this value again. What we are interested in is looking at voltage. We start off at about the 31 and a half volt mark. And as we begin to pull current, we see our voltage dropping. And it drops all the way to this mark here in the middle. This is where there was a mistake that I've done with programming the speed control initially, and that's because we see this red line. This red line that we're looking at is actually the voltage cutoff of our battery. When we hit this voltage, it's going to pull power out of the system so that we do not consume more battery because it's trying to preserve the amount of voltage that we have within the pack. Now typically on speed runs we only make like we said a pass or two then we bring it in. We should never ever consume the full amount of capacity that we have in a battery pack. So because of this what we really should do is pull our voltage cutoff out of this speed run and we will not have this issue and it'll eliminate the red solid line here that we have for the cutoff value. This is something I didn't do originally, but I will do before we go for our next run. So now something to take a look at is how much are we actually consuming from the battery pack when we make our high speed 100 mile per hour pass. So somewhere right in the middle here, we're at 305.5 amps. This is again, very, very impressive amount of power, which is almost they're hitting 8,000 watts. 8,000 watts, quite impressive, especially from a conservative setup with this power system. And the last thing to look at is our temperatures for the speed control as well as the motor. Our speed control, it is able to dissipate heat quite quickly. It's got a nice fan in there and we're able to see that it's shedding that heat and giving itself new opportunities every single time we have to run. However, the motor is not the same. It's a very large mass which tends to hold heat for longer periods of time. And this can be a problem for us because we are accumulating temperature, accumulating heat energy as we continue to run these back-to-back -back passes. In this case, we start off at around the 71.8 degrees Celsius, and after the run, we are at 74 degrees Celsius. So you can see that the temperature of the motor is rising. Still not that big of a deal. We are hitting a maximum motor temperature, and if we look at the full run, because what we're gonna see here is that the motor temperature continues to increase even after we bring the car in and it's sitting there in front of us, it hits a maximum of about 77 degrees Celsius. Here at this temperature, this is still below my comfort zone for this motor. On these castle motors, I like to see anything below 80 degrees Celsius as a maximum and we are below that value even after all of these passes here. So good to see that. That's it for this video, everyone. Don't forget to join me in a couple days where we're gonna see if we can actually hit that 100 mile per hour, 160 kilometer an hour mark while staying on the ground. I've reinstalled that front spoiler or lip 
back on the front end. We'll worry about the drag that those end up providing us later as we start to climb the ladder in speed. As for now, I'm not worried about drag with how much power potential we have. In addition to that, we're gonna also make a bunch of passes back to back to back just to see how many passes we can accumulate until we get that 1721 2400 kV motor hot, or at least as hot as I'm comfortable running it. There you have it, like this video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can see you this coming Monday. Thanks a lot for watching, see you in the next one.